and shares of JD Logistics surging more than 17 percent at one point, and now it's up around 11 percent. Well, that's against the Hang Seng Index, which is now up uh, around seven tenths. Uh, of a percent slightly just before the lunch break. Well, this initial public offering was more than 700 times subscribed by retail investors in the city's second largest float this year. And shares were priced at a little more than 40 Hong Kong dollars apiece, and that was at the lower end of the expected range. But still, JD Logistics raised more than $3 billion. Uh, that's second to the more than $5 billion raised three months ago by video sharing mobile app Kuaishou. Uh, with more than $1 million investors bidding. The IPO is reportedly the third most popular one in the city after offerings by Kuaishou and Nongfu Spring. And JD Log Logistic Institutional Offer was about 11 times subscribed. And but the popularity has far outshone its fundamentals. And JD Logistics' first quarter gross profit plunged more than 72% on year to $36 billion and is expected to record a significant adjusted loss this year. Well, the company is also facing fierce competition in the express delivery sector as more participants edge into the market. And the listing comes at a time when Chinese regulators are tightening regulations on fintech companies and targeting tech giants with stricter anti-monopoly rules. And analysts say that investors are now more rational than before as they revalue the shares of such companies. And some say that even though regulators have raised the bar for fintech firms, Beijing's support for tech firms continues. And one expert tells us why investors piled into JD Logistics IPO and the prospects for the industry in China. Well, what's actually attracting investors is that if you look at the logistic industry in China, it's actually growing at a very fast speed. I mean, maybe 20% per year because of the digital uh, market has been growing. And the JD Logistics is actually a very competitive uh, player in this market, probably only next to Shenfeng Logistics. So, Investors are really confident and happy about this stock, and it actually provides them with a new opportunity uh, to buy a competitor of Shenfeng, a very strong, capable competitor of Shenfeng. So, you know, you are an investor, you find more targets, you're pretty happy about that. For this industry, it will be under pressure for quite a while in the future. M meanwhile, the expansion rate will still keep on expanding. I mean, the uh, growing rate will be around 20 to 30 percent for years because China's digital industry is actually increasing. But the problem over here is that the government is putting a lot of pressure onto things like employee protection, uh, benefit to employees, social insurance, uh, monopoly, all these kinds of things cut the uh, potential profit that might be gained by these companies. So what you might see in the next few years is that the market keep on increasing because the digital market is actually expanding. The growth speed will still be there, 20%, 30%, but the profitability will be low or even negative. So it really based on how the investors are going to look at that, the market sentiment will play a lot in here. If investors believe that the profitability will return and the market is still growing, you will see a very bull market. But on the other hand, if people say, OK, they are not going to make a lot of money in the future, even if they are a very large companies, so the valuation will drop. Oatly is making a splash in financial markets as the firm tries to expand its global footprint, and investors are taking a big gulp of the plant-based milk. Oatly debuted on the Nasdaq a week ago, with shares closing up more than 18 percent, giving the Swedish company a $10 billion valuation. Returns for the last five days are up nearly 10 percent, and that could continue as more consumers turn to dairy alternatives for health and environmental reasons. William Danslow reports from New York. Coffee making can be a science and a work of art. And the type of milk you use can have a significant impact. The Monkey Cup in Harlem began carrying oat milk about two years ago due to consumer demand. Baristas here say it's now more popular than almond and whole milk. The oat milk that give you that creaminess and not that strong flavor that is very, very delicious. The texture is very similar to whole milk when you prepare it in for, for a latte, for example. But for me, the, main part, the, the most important part is the flavor. American consumers have developed a taste for dairy milk alternatives in recent years. It's an industry now worth $2.5 billion in the US and close to $10 billion globally. And Swedish company Oatly has carved out a prominent position in a crowded market. Its revenue more than doubled last year. 
Wheatley says demand completely exploded during the COVID-19 pandemic, reporting triple-digit growth across three continents. The company hopes its IPO will help supply keep up with demand. Oatly declined our interview request, citing the regulatory quiet period surrounding the IPO. The company says it's seeing a 450% annual growth rate in Asia, and analysts say the move to go public could help fuel further growth in that market. They've got partnerships with Starbucks across China, across India, which I think will really target younger consumers, and I think that's a very sensible way of Oatly looking to seed the category and seed the brand with younger consumers. Studies suggest plant-based milks have a substantially smaller environmental impact than milk from cows. Almond milk was one of the first popular substitutes, but a glass of almond milk requires about 74 litres of water to produce. Experts say there are less thirsty alternatives. If you want to use even less fresh and irrigated water in your food footprint, you can move to oat, hemp, or soy milk, which all have significantly lower water use than almond or dairy milk. Analysts expect the US dairy alternative sector to grow by another billion dollars by 2025. Compared to the dairy industry, it still pales in comparison. But companies like Oatly will hope continued environmental awareness will help prevent consumer demand turning sour. William Denslow, CNA, New York. The authorities in Singapore have notified a social media platform known as MeWe that they must remove an offending poll which ranks the female ascetizers or religious leaders here based on their sexual attractiveness. The Infocom Media Development Authority says that content breaches the Internet Code of Practice as it constitutes prohibited material. The authority has also contacted other major social media players here to ensure that poll is not circulated. Singapore's Minister for Communications and Information, Josephine Chiu, who is also the chairman of the People's Action Party Women's Wing, says she's appalled by this poll and she's condemned it in the strongest terms. This, she says, is a deliberate exercise in demeaning women, especially those who have dedicated themselves to upholding their faith. The minister says the ministry will work and continue its work to protect women and girls from online harm. Still ahead, Tokyo and other parts of Japan face the prospect of an extended state of emergency. Medical experts now fear a new variant strain might be spawned from the summer games. Also, global vaccine sharing scheme COVAX has called for additional funding to help them boost inoculations in the poorer nations. This is Game Ojisan. I make YouTube videos. While he does bespoke carpentry, I get up close with a new generation of local craft people. Whatever it took to become a woodworker, I think I did it. Starting with a furniture artisan. If you have a CEO, the desk represents you. Will I keep all my fingers? Handmade Tales, a brand new series, Sunday on CNN. ちゃんは山梨名物の宝刀食べたいもの。ブレていません。ウィンサーとどうぞ。ありますか。これ全部いつも置くかな。大変だ。へえ、こうやってなるんだ。何ですか。いい、いい話。ラムラムラム。はい